Well, friends, Mega Mama here. I'm ready. I got the I'm gonna cup. I'm drinking my red leaf raspberry tea. I got an empty 30 quart bowl, so you know we're gonna fix this. I've got some other things in my 30 quart, my other two 30 quart bowls, but don't worry, they're all gonna get a workout. So here's what we're doing. We are gonna cook all 40 large family freezer meals in my large family freezer meal pack 15, which is a dinner's pack. Oh, yes, we are. So We already got our meat prepped. We did all that. We already got all the fruits and veggies prepped. No, we don't. We didn't prep any fruit. We got all the veggies prepped. Getting ahead of myself doing other meal prep videos, right? We have our onions, our mushrooms, our asparagus, our celery. Everything is ready to go. We've got all the ingredients here on this counter. So we're gonna jump into our very first freezer meal recipe for cooking up these 40 meals. Now, how do I do the 40 meals? If you're new here, and you'll have to go back, oh boy. If if you like big freezer cooking videos, and if this is a new video for you, you are in for a treat. I have been doing super mega massive freezer cooking on YouTube, I think for almost eight years now. Oh yes, we, we go big and massive around here. I'm also a mom of nine, we're a family of 11, so I feed 11 all day, every day. Quick little things to note, whenever I do cook up 40 freezer meals, which I'm so glad because they saved my mama life. No, we do not only eat these 40 freezer meals in a row and eat nothing else. No, no. What I do is I do a big cook up like this and these meals just save my life often. So like last week we had a lot of field trips, a lot of outings and activities. If I would have had freezer meals several nights, I would have had these defrosted and ready to go to make for an easy dinner. I'm not getting caught in that situation again. I'm getting my freezer stocked back up. So the way that these 40 easy freezer meals work for me in my household is I look at my week. I look at what's going on. Okay, we have Civil Air Patrol on this night. We have church on that night. We have homeschool group all day on this day. Those will be the days that the evening before I will set out freezer meals in my refrigerator to defrost. And I know future Jay Morell will thank me that dinner is already done. And I'm doing dinner this evening for weeks and weeks to come. Now I still cook fresh. I know some folks will worry, well you don't cook fresh. What about cooking fresh? Well first off, you can pick the very best ingredients for your freezer meals. You can use probiotic sour cream and you can make homemade noodles and you can do homemade cream of mushroom soup. I even have, if I could reach it, I would show you, picture me holding my jar of freeze dryer organic peppers, okay? You can doctor it up any way that works best for you with the ingredients that you have on hand. But if you've watched my videos, you know that big batch cooking is also my jam. I have been big batch cooking since the days that I used to work full-time weekends as a nurse with several little kids at home and my husband would, you know, tag team take over on the weekends. And so back then I learned to make a really big meal on Friday and that would be our meal for the weekend and also that was about 15 or so years ago that's when I got into doing one for now one for later freezer meals which is a really great way to get going on freezer cooking especially if you don't want to start with 40 meals anyway my dryer is singing to us but I will definitely still have evenings where I might do like a big thing of egg roll in the bowl and that'll be the next couple dinners or in recent videos big thing of sloppy joes or a big pot of chili taco night but taco night goes on here for several days so cooking fresh but always in a big batch i can't just cook for one meal it burns i'm too deep into this mega food matrix to just cook for one meal so when i am cooking fresh i'm still big batch cooking so my family can get as many meals as possible out of it okay so let's hit these freezer meals we're all prepped and ready to go let's do this and also friends, remember that there are just a few days left to save over 80% off and get my fall 2022 Super Mega Extravaganza Bundle that includes this big batch large family freezer meal pack 15 where we are guided through doing these 40 casserole dinners plus so much mega more. Click the first link in the description below and save over 80% off now for a limited time. It's almost over. Yay. So today we are making four 9 by 13 pans of a large family style chicken pot pie casserole. We are doing ham and asparagus casserole, also large family Swedish meatball casserole, yum. We're also doing cheesy beef and rice casserole, large family style smoked sausage and broccoli casserole. 
We're gonna do taco macaroni casserole and also chicken, mushroom, and spinach lasagna. And we're gonna do large family make-ahead cheesy tuna noodle casserole, large family chicken and Swiss casserole, and also hearty beef and corn casserole. And also for those of you who are interested, my large family freezer meal pack 15 has a bonus smaller edition of all the recipes. So if you just wanted to make say 10 to 20 big freezer meals, you could do that instead of going for all 40 at one time. But let me show you how the 40's done. Okay, also wanted to show you all today, I had to go to an appointment this morning, and on the way home, a friend of mine who I just bought Egyptian walking onions from, we just planted two of our raised beds with those. She told me of another local farm store in our area that had like the best organic garlic, and it's where she got hers for her garlic bed. So I stopped by there and picked up my garlic while I was out, so I got this whole big bag for us, and of course we're gonna break it down and plant each little head of garlic individual, but that's upcoming project. And so also while I was there, don't worry, we are getting into freezer cooking, I got this giant elephant garlic. I thought, oh, if regular garlic is fantastic, elephant garlic is gonna be amazing as well. So I got, mm, I don't know, let's see here. Well, this was $5.99 a pound, so maybe I got two pounds of this. She told me that this elephant garlic actually doesn't preserve longer term as well as this style garlic. So I got some, I'm gonna plant it. I've never planted it before. We will give it a go. I figure, well, I could probably freeze dry it, grind it into a powder, possibly can it. Uh, there, there are things that can be done. Maybe it'll be fine in the freezer, I don't know. But this is the garlic that hopefully I'll get a whole raised bed or maybe two out of. So if I plant it now, getting towards end of October here in Virginia, it should be ready by next July or so, yay. Alrighty, so we're gonna get things going for these chicken pot pie casseroles. Oh, if I don't pinch my finger, ouch, that hurt. Oh, got the kids out the door for an evening activity. So we're gonna get cooking now. And I'm gonna get my onions going. It's about four cups of chopped onions. And on our freezer meal prep day, you know we went to town with that wonderful chopper, getting the onions all prepped and ready to go for today. Now, I did not go ahead and prep my couple little potatoes. Now, I don't remember if that was four or five. We're just gonna, maybe a little extra there. I won't tell if you don't. Um, but I'm going to just wash and peel and cube my potatoes to throw in next. cooking in any of these Dutch ovens to don't just grab your lid with your bare hands like I was tempted to do. Okay, I've had my onions and potatoes going in here. That's my tea. It's just going to keep beeping at me if I don't get it out of the microwave, so hold on. It's, it's persistent here. Alrighty, so we're going to drop in eight cups of mixed vegetables. I just have my mixed vegetable bag from Costco. And of course you can eyeball it. Eyeballing is my favorite. pushing it with this Dutch oven. I could have used my 15 quart, but we'll see. Will we make it or not? We shall see. So now I'm gonna also, it ends up being a cup of butter and then our seasonings. We're gonna go ahead and get those in. It's my butter from Azure, yay. But again, remember, remember when you see all this butter that we are making four dinners, okay? And also, many folks have used my recipes for many years that 
are empty nesters or there might only be a, a household of two or three and they tell me that they will make my 9 by 13 recipes and they will get many more meals out of them. So it may be one 9 by 13 pan might be dinner for two nights or they use my same recipes and instead of making them in 9 by 13 pans they will use 8 by 8 pans so they will get many more dinners out of the 9 by 13 pan recipes. There's lots of ways to do it. Now people will also ask me, Jay Morell, will one 9 by 13 pan feed your family? So here's the thing to know about me and the way that I use these meals is if I don't have heavy sides, which I usually work for heavy side items, side item options, but let's just say busy night, can't think of nothing, can't pull anything else together, then I will do two nine by 13 pans and that'll be dinner. I try to also add in side items like salad and bread or rolls and steamed vegetables and fruit. I mean, sometimes in videos people will be like, why did you just cut up a whole watermelon and serve it with your scrambled eggs? Because we had watermelon. So that's just the way my mama brain works is whatever items we have available, I will throw those out on the, the, the Mega Mama Island now, but over on the table or on the island, wherever we are serving dinner from or any meal at that time, I'll just serve whatever else we have available. If I have a 50 pound box of bananas, I very well might have two bunches of bananas there. Like, there you go, there's some options for you. So then seasoning wise, I'm adding in some thyme, some garlic powder and some salt and pepper. Alrighty, so I have about a cup of flour here. Of course, I am holding my camera with one hand, so give me lots of stirring grace. This gives you all the, the bird's eye view though, so I'm just gonna start mixing in my flour here. We'll slowly get through the whole cup, then we will let that cook for about two minutes or so, and then we will start adding in our chicken broth. So what we're doing is we're making our pot pie filling. And no one ever minds pot pie filling. And that butter melted down nicely. my tea kettle going in the background. My tea, my I'm gonna tea that I started with, it's actually, you know, in a <laughs> making movie magic, haha, -ha, but that was a couple hours ago because I ended up mom life, getting kids out the door and doing some quick dinner. Oh, did I even tell you all what we did for dinner? I don't think I did. I had had some meat that I needed some people in this house to set out and they accidentally, there was some confusion, and they set out some meatloaf, some freezer meatloaf to defrost. And so I was like, wow, we now have defrosted meatloaf. So that was okay. I threw it into casserole pans, cooked it in the oven, and we had that for lunch and for dinner today. So that worked out well. And now we will have pot pie casserole prepped and ready to go, yay. Also, I don't have to feel too bad for my tea because mine usually sits and seeps for 30 minutes or an hour, sometimes longer until I get back to it. So again, future Jim Morrell, I'm prepping for her. So I've got about 
four cups of chicken broth added to this now. And we are gonna add in four more cups. And it's just on a low heat. I do have broth that I have canned, but I also have some boxed broth that I want to use up. So that's what I am working on using with this freezer cooking. I probably have enough store-bought broth to do one more big freezer cooking session besides this one. So you will continue to see my great value broth until we get through it here. thing for a few minutes and then we will come back so now I'm gonna work on my toppy um, I am just using this quick because I actually had a little bag left and then I have another bag left so hopefully I have about nine cups here I also I'll link it for you down below but over on the blog largefamilytable.com I do have a recipe for homemade this quick or quick baking mix to confirm how much I had on hand here. And so I measured out, it's about seven and a half cups. Not exactly the nine we need, but I'm not going to make homemade quick baking mix tonight because we got enough going on this evening and I think I can still make it work. So here I have about 20 cups of shredded chicken and I'm going to add my sauce to the chicken and then we're going to start filling our 9 by 13 pans. So, so what I like to do is use my glass baking dishes that I've collected over the years. These are my 9 by 13. These are all freezer safe and oven safe glass. I've never had an issue with them. Uh, and then these are, these are a little dip, dipper. Yeah, a little dipper and a little deeper than what I would normally get. Like if I get them at Walmart, a restaurant supply store, Amazon. These were a little smaller than the 9 by 13 size, but they equal the same volume. They're a little deeper. And I believe that a wonderful YouTube viewer had sent me a box of 50 to my P.O. box. So thank you very much. So I'm going to do my glass dishes first, and then when I run out of glass dishes, we're going to switch to these. Yay! All right, so I've got the sauce that we've been making on the stove top. I'm going to add this to my chicken. And then we're going to add it to our pans, and then we will just drop our baking mix on top like little drop biscuits. Supposed to be in the Mega Mama kitchen. 
Aha, uh -huh. flies don't belong here. Okay, so, just doing this little clean up. And now I'm going to get some garlic wrap in there. So a little assembly line. I tell you, we did find another box of Miss Quick, so I was able to finish up with what I was missing there. And I just kind of spread it around. We will spread it around here a little better in a minute. Just kind of plopping it on there, giving it its assignment. Your destiny is to be on this particular chicken pot pie there, Miss Quick. Now we will get these four chicken pot pie casseroles wrapped up and down in the freezer. And so we meet again, aha, uh -huh. big bulk foil and big bulk plastic wrap. It's time, oh yes. So if you're over in my membership, you have watched me in recent months and years do a lot of freezer meals, but I feel like for the YouTube channel, big batch cooking, freezer meals. Okay, I had, I had to return to the videotape. So about six months ago here on YouTube, I came out with 28 easy freezer meals from scratch. Cook once, eat for a month, all that good stuff. And those were 28 slow cooker freezer meals. They can also be Instant Pot freezer meals. And then eight months ago, I had filling my freezer with 18 large family freezer meals from scratch. And that was when I cooked up 20, one for now, one for later, low carb freezer meals. You can truly do it where you're prepping two every night, one to eat that night, one to put in your freezer for later. But I just went ahead and did the whole 20 recipes at one time to show those to you guys. And then 10 months ago, I did how to cook massive large family freezer meals. This was a lot of lunch recipes. So anyway, you know from years past, we did this often, but I have not been consistent with this, especially during the kitchen build. And before my kitchen build, I had a whole year of pregnancy, traumatic birth, kidney issues, surgery, stuff, things, all of it. So I just feel like this is a momentous occasion. Let's see if I can find my, I have someone borrow it. There we go. And it was put back where it goes, yay. Because it's, it has, it has been a while since we've cut out the big foil and we cut out the big plastic wrap. And now we're doing it in the Mega Mama kitchen. Little tear, we've all worked so hard to get here for Jay Morrell to have some elbow room, right? And if you really wanna go back in time, you can go back eight years or so back in my farmhouse with some of my original freezer cooking videos. And all I had was the farmhouse table to work on. Yes, indeed. And then when I moved to the forest house, that kitchen was really nice to me. It was about 15 years old and it might as well have been. A, it was a brand new Mega Mama kitchen to me. Yes, it was. We did a lot 
of mega cooking in that kitchen. Now we're going to do a lot of mega cooking in this kitchen. So with my freezer meals, and I know I do have a lot of new faces here, with my freezer meals I get questions about freezer burn. I just usually double wrap my freezer meals. So good layer of foil, sometimes two, good layer of plastic wrap. And also with my freezer meals, these are all going to be used fairly quickly. I mean, some of them could stretch out to still be in the freezer 16 weeks from now, but the way I see it, over about 12 weeks, we're going to use these up. And I do have the labels that you can print out for your freezer meals. I just, for me, I like to just write the name and the date. You can also write the temperature on there if you have other people that are going to be cooking your meals. This is just what I do for myself. I'll have other people take it out. And if someone's going to cook it, I will tell them the temperature. Let's see here. I think I will do assembly line. Get that foil on. I think I will do all my foil first. But anyway, we go through our freezer meals so quickly. They're not around here long enough to get freezer burned. But if I was concerned about it, I would truly do two full wraps of foil and two full wraps of plastic wrap. better assembly line like this, huh? So friends, I think that pretty soon we need to go to Costco and get another big thing of plastic wrap and another big thing of foil. And maybe now I will finally date them. I did not put a date on them when I got these, but I know it has been a while. And uh, I know it's it's getting, getting time for some more. We are almost through them, so that's a pretty big accomplishment. Now, a little known fact about when I'm filming this first portion of this video, and don't worry, stick with me, friends. We are going to do all 40 meals. But when I am filming this, it was actually a few days after I sprained my back, and I had just finished a weekend of sitting on ice for several days in a row, and I really, really thought that I was going, that I was, you know, that I was rested, and that if I took it slow, I thought that I could do this freezer cooking and that I could get it done because we have to believe that things are getting better and we can get it done. So on this day, everything was as prepped as it could possibly be. But here's the honest truth. It took me six hours to do these two recipes on this first day. This chicken pot pie casserole and then the ham noodle casserole. It should not take six hours. It will not take you six hours to do that. But as the evening went on, I was in a lot of pain. Again, the pain was not caused by this freezer cooking. It was from a back sprain a few days earlier. And, you know, good intention, doing all the things. I just thought, okay, I've rested. I am slightly better. If I take it slow, I can do this. But honestly, at the end of this night, which we're going to get there here shortly, the end of this first night, I was like, yeah, um, I'm not going to be able to do this right now. I had ice directly on my back while I was filming this, and I actually ended up giving myself, I, was, I always want to say freezer burn, but 
frostbite that I also had to heal from. So it was just kind of a one thing after another time. Uh, but we are getting through these chicken pot pie casseroles. So anyway, friends, I just wanted to give you that behind the scenes look. So as you're watching this, you know, I'm really dealing with something here in the background. I've put my best face on. I've, I'm working, uh, you know, slow and steady. I'm thinking I'm going to get through this. But eventually there comes a point in the evening where I realize I cannot do this right now. So keep watching and see what happens. Get in the water going. Might have been a little too excited there. Filling up that pot. I've got four boxes of noodles to do. And when I get too excited, I have learned this, when I get too excited my pot filler and filling up a pot, I just scoop some out with my KitchenAid bowl. <laughs> There you go, that should be pretty good now. Just one, one KitchenAid bowl full when the pot is too full. And of course, friends know I absolutely should not be dumping this little bit of, yeah, the noodles, the water, should not be doing this, but here we are. Future Jamarell says, Jamarell, you should not have been doing that. But now we know. I learned some big lessons on this night. Alrighty, we are just melting all the butter and sauteing all the onions this evening. So I got my noodles done for our ham and asparagus freezer meals. And I did wash up those dishes. Now we're gonna get the butter going and the onions for this one. So I'm gonna add in another cup of flour. I'm gonna also add in our seasonings, but let me get stirring this for a moment. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to add in a total of four cups slowly to our mixture of flour and onions and seasonings. I'm adding in four cups of milk, and then once I get the whole four cups in and I'm stirring that, then I'm going to start working on getting in four cups of chicken broth and I'm continuing to stir the whole time. I was rushing around a little bit. I don't know if you know anyone who does that or not. I was trying to get my ingredients that I needed to mix these on the other side of my island there, and I stumbled with my fresh chopped asparagus, and it is now very pretty on my floor. So this is gonna be a yummy, creamy ham and noodle casserole. Oh yes, it will. And uh, the asparagus, I'm going to have to harvest that. Yay! Harvesting the asparagus off my kitchen floor. Put that in my scrap bowl. So the sauce, though, is what well, sauce looks nice. That's good. I guess we could say, into each life, a little asparagus must fall. I'm just going to go ahead. I need four tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm going to just go ahead and get those here in my bowl. I'm going to put in six cups of cubed ham. Each one of these little packs that's already diced is two cups. Two, four, six. Okay, I think I might be able to talk here for a moment. I'm at 37 minutes, 53 seconds. And so here I am just stirring up my noodles. I've added the cube ham to my noodles. Again, I really like those little packs. Okay, I might lose a spoon in the process, but we're doing it. Thank you to the viewer who sent me this Mega Mama spoon years ago. I appreciate it. 
And so now I'm going to stir in this cream sauce and this ham and the noodles. And of course, I don't have the asparagus to throw in there. I mean, really, at this point, I could have thrown in mixed vegetables. Or if you find yourself in this situation, you can just replace it with a different vegetable. Now, again, another little behind the scenes is I knew with my back, I was like, okay, I have to finish up this second recipe on this night. And I'm just going to have to be done. And with how I was feeling, I was like, I'm not going to be able to do these other eight recipes the next day. I could just tell that, uh-huh, I was going to need, JMRL here, uh-huh, I was going to need a longer break than the few days I already took. And after this, I ended up taking uh, a good six to eight weeks, nice big break and really let my body heal even further before we tackle the rest of this freezer cooking. But don't worry because the rest of the freezer cooking, it's all coming up for you. I am just scraping the last of my bowl and I'm going to get these casseroles all wrapped up. And you can see this is even before my new hutch came. Now we have the, the wonderful new hutch that's there by that lamp that has been working out just splendidly. I love it so much, but you will see that here coming up real quick. So here we go, we have four ham and noodle casseroles going into the freezer for many dinners to come. Well friends, I know you won't believe it. Couple things. Yeah, I've been wearing the hat all day. <laughs> it's like 27 degrees when we left for church this morning. And uh, it's just, hats are an all day commitment, right? Also, along with that, been doing more of my freezer meal prep today. We had family that visited us this evening, so I wasn't able to film and assemble any meals, but I was able to pick away at it a little bit. So I've been working on getting noodles done, the different egg noodles that I need to do for different freezer meals. And I also made 24 cups of rice here. And so this stuff, it's prepped now. I'm thinking, okay, so yesterday I got all the meat cooked also. I'm sure as you made it to this point of the video, you gathered that I did a lot of meal prep. But at this point, where am I in the universe? Uh, yeah, we're nearing December. So early October, <laughs> I did actually, it was the weekend of October 8th. And I know that because that's when it was the Homesteaders of America convention weekend. Was I also had my visit from Becky at Acre Homestead and her mama. And I prepped all that meat, had my big freezer cooking day. And then I had a chain of events that led to, but I'm bump my sprain back, which activated injury level sciatic nerve pain. And I've had, and I've had a good six weeks of recuperating. So a lot of that meat that I big batch cooked, excuse me, while I'm talking to you, I should be draining these noodles. Now let's see here. Okay, doing it, doing it, doing it, feeling okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hold on, let's just go ahead and drain these noodles and get this done. The noodles looked perfect, and then I had to look around for my memory card and get my camera set up. I was hoping I didn't let them set too long, but they look pretty good now. I'm just running some cold water on them now. So a lot of that meat that we big batch cooked that I did in my freezer meal prep video has been used as pre-cooked meat for 
various easy batch meals over these last six weeks. Of course, I have had freezer meals. We've done some slow cooker freezer meals, but we've also done very simple things, and I've had a lot of the teens help with this as well. Um, very simple things such as, I mean, it's, it's good for the pores, right, all this food. We did the easy family big batch classics. And what I mean by big batch classics in that sense is that their meals, like I cook for leftovers. I live for it, right? Like spaghetti and tacos and chili and sloppy joes and things that we can make a big batch of and eat it for two or three days for various meals. And as I've said, over this healing time, I've had various teens and family members help me with that. So over this last six weeks, we have had different freezer meals that I've had in the freezer. I did have some slow cooker freezer meals in there still. And then as you just saw, I did, I did. That was such a pitiful attempt because I knew how I was feeling that night and I know how much better I feel now. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't have even attempted that, but you know, hindsight. I knew how I was feeling in the footage that you just got done watching when it took me about six hours to make those two recipes. I just, I gave myself I almost said freezer burn on my back. I gave myself frostbite on my back because I kept the ice like right there and uh, don't do that. Anyway, I had to do that in order to get through that cooking. I do like to bust through and get stuff done, but yeah, I, I met my match that evening and after that evening, which I'll say was about a week into my injury and I had already sat on ice and done all that, uh, I just learned that evening I was not ready to start busting around cooking again. And I have, I have behaved. I've been good, I've been good. I've been all clear with my physical therapist and my chiropractor uh, to start start hustling around some more. So we're gonna call this our victorious freezer cooking. So yesterday I cooked more chicken, more ground beef. I got the kielbasa already defrosted. I've got the cubed ham defrosted and it's different meat than the meat you watched me cook six weeks ago. But as I said, we have used that. It's been absorbed in different ways. Like we just finished several days of tacos. I used 10 pounds of ground beef to do those tacos. 10 pounds of ground meat when I do spaghetti and usually, you know, 10 pounds, 15 pounds when I do sloppy joes, we go through it quickly. We did already use some of those pot pie freezer meals that I showed earlier in this video. So it all gets used around here. But in this victorious freezer cooking, that's what I was saying. Yesterday I did the meat and this evening I've just slowly puttered around the kitchen and I've done hmm, so many egg noodles and I cooked 12 cups of rice, which 24 cups of cooked rice that we need for freezer meals coming up. So tomorrow with these rice and the noodles that are prepped and with the meat that's already been cooked, we're gonna pull this together. I'm excited. So I'm just gonna get these noodles cooling. And I just cleared space in the top of the Mega Mama refrigerator for this to stay overnight. And we will do the rest. So tomorrow we will have all this prepped and we will tackle doing the rest of the 32 freezer meals out of the 40. So I already got eight done. You gotta love a girl who keeps trying. So we're doing this. And the ingredients have been set out yet again. So we'll be, again, we're working with these tomorrow. Have some of our canned items here. And anyway, it, it's coming together. Stick with me, yay. Well, friends, happy day. We are back. We are doing the rest of our 40 freezer meals, 30 some that still need to be all assembled. It's happening this afternoon. Oh yes it is, we're gonna get this whiteboard set up first.
now I'll tell you. I feel really good about today's freezer cooking time because we have worked so hard for this. This is Victoria's freezer cooking. <laughs> we are doing it. So on the whiteboard, we have our 40 plus freezer meals. This is the Big Batch Freezer Cooking Guide 15. Chicken pot pie casserole, ham casserole. It's actually ham and asparagus and I'm trying to remember back because again, this has been several weeks. Something happened with my asparagus and I just, I think I dropped it or I had a cat get in it. So there was some asparagus flinging going on. But those are done, those are done. So that is eight freezer meals that I did out of our 40 and look at this. The odd, oddly satisfying with the whiteboard, right? I just get to cross them off. And then after that, we had life and stuff and I'm going to give myself some really big check marks. This is like Jay Morrell meets Bob Ross doing like some happy little check marks. Okay, we're good. I, I got my check mark for the life and stuff that happened at the beginning of this freezer cooking. So today, you and me, we're as prepped and ready as we're gonna be. We are doing Swedish meatball casserole, cheesy beef and rice casserole, smoked sausage and broccoli casserole. We're doing four pans of taco macaroni. We're also doing tuna noodle, but a cheesy tuna noodle. Uh, also a sweet chicken and Swiss bake and a beef and corn noodle casserole. Now in guide 15, there is a chicken, mushroom, spinach, lasagna delicious thing and you can always shove all kinds of vegetables in there to, to get them in your family, get them in your kids. Anyway, anyway, I have a lot of my ingredients from when I first pulled this freezer cooking together in October, okay? I have a lot of those. Some of the ingredients though, particularly the ingredients that were needed for that lasagna, I was going through this the other night, I was like, yeah, I just, I don't have the mushrooms, I don't have the spinach, there's things I don't have on hand. So anyway, I think we're just gonna try to do regular old lasagna, and I might also, I have some cabbage, so I might also be able to pull off some cabbage lasagnas. I have a variety of probiotic sour cream and different cottage cheeses and such that I know I can use in place of ricotta. So we're just gonna get going with this finally, thank you Lord, and we're gonna see see how far we're gonna get. But I'm hopeful, it is 3.20, 3.30. And Travis just took a whole van of kids over the river through the woods. They are dropping stuff off at thrift stores. They are dropping some stuff we had for two other families off. They are picking up some mail. They are returning library books. They're picking up horse feed. They're doing a lot. So when you're wondering, where's all the kids, what's happening, that's where they are going to be doing all that running around for the next couple hours. I do have Zion over here. He is peeling some onions for his mama, so that is super helpful if you hear the onions are going. And let's do this, yeah. So here's the large family Swedish meatball casserole that we were gonna do first. And we are gonna get four nine by 13 pans out of this, yay. Okay, we're getting our towel on the shoulder so we know things are getting serious. First thing I'm going to do is get this butter going in the pan for the Swedish meatball casserole. And I have some butter that we got from Azure. And so one of these is two cups, so I'm gonna cut it right in half. Now yes, it's a whole cup of butter, but remember we are getting four meals out of this. And what we're doing here is making our cream sauce that is going in all of these casseroles. So we're gonna melt the butter and then we're gonna get our onions in here and saute those up and go from there, do things. Smells good, smells nice and buttery. Gonna start putting my flour in with these onions and then we'll add in the Worcestershire sauce and the broth.
part. I'm gonna switch to my And friends, this is where <laughs> doing any kind of gravy or cream sauces, it's always this moment where I'm like, okay, stir, Jamarel, stir, stir, get that whisk a going. So it might look scary. Stick with me though. It's gonna all work out. I just have to not stop whisking. And here we go. I am adding more broth in, and the whisking is not stopping. We will be victorious in the whisking and in the freezer cooking. And again, on this evening, I do have two teenagers available to help me, which is very nice. And so even though I am not in any pain at this point, I was like, that's we are we are gonna be super on top of this right now as as this mama body continues to heal. Okay, so also cooking in this in this new space, it's like this afternoon sun. It's it's the blinding sun at times. Okay. So I'm gonna finish adding in my broth. I do have the heat turned down to a medium heat now, but I'm going to cook this for about three to five minutes. I also added in four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I make it a big deal, so it feels like a big deal when I say it. It's like, how can I say it and not be awkward? Anyway, after it cooks for a few minutes, then we're gonna add in our softened cream cheese and make that part of our sauce. And the reason that I'm using box broth, of course, make your homemade broth, get beef bones and do broth. I mean, there's, you know, all kinds of ways to get your broth. This was some broth I had in my pantry, actually all the broth we have is from my pantry that needs used up. I do have some broth that I've canned also, but I'm just working through things like everybody else, and I thought, no, oh, I need to I need to make sure I use these up. And um, they're also past their date, and that's fine with me. Not all of the broth is. I feel like I have to explain this now, but these, these four things of beef broth were but I don't mind using things past their date because things are generally fine for much longer past the date. Okay, so now we're gonna just keep stirring this for a couple minutes. tell you that onion chopper that I got and, and having a man son to do the chopping but both of those things highly recommend highly recommend definitely come in handy he's getting the rest of the onions done for me and uh, I like that slice and it's washed up well I've been using that probably for two months also it's been very 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 good to me Okay, I think we're about ready to add in our cream cheese. Okay, and then it's two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. My cream cheese is also dated for, this was at least this year, September 2022. I do have some of that Nancy's cream cheese as well, but it should be okay. Cream cheese will tell us real quick if it's not okay. Calm down there. And calm down. Oh, we're good. We're good. No science projects. <laughs> no science projects going on. That's good. That's how we like it. 
we like no science cream cheese today because we do it so hard to get. And basically, I just have to then stir this until it's melted. So we're getting there. I'm getting used to metal around the stove. It's getting hot. And don't worry friends, the cream cheese is going to melt up perfect for us. It, it's going to all work out in the end, I promise. And hey, real quick, click that first link in the description below and go ahead and snag my Fall 2022 Super Mega Extravaganza Food Sanity Saving Bundle that is right now for just a few more days marked down to over 80% off. You get this Large Family Freezer Meal Guide 15, which is all about casseroles, but you also get so many other freezer cooking and meal prep guides that I have created that include breakfast, lunches, a variety of dinners, slow cooker dinners, electric pressure cookers, meal plans, grocery lists, big batch cooking guides, holiday guides, cookie guides, all, all of it. All of your mama food sanity saving needs to help you get dinner on the table, help you serve breakfast quickly, help you make lunches that the kids will enjoy. All of it right now is over 80% off, but just for a few more days. So click the first link in the description below and get it all for 80% off while you still can. Yay. Okay, now the big moment of truth. My heavy, my heavy whipping cream is, is good. Okay, so I need to add in a cup of this. The heat is off. I really should move my pan and when my strong arms get back in this room, I will have him move this over for me. Six weeks ago, Jamarel, eight weeks ago, Jamarel would have totally moved this over. And I know we have it on, we have it on video. I know I dumped that pan the other night and I should not, I should not have dumped that. Um, I was pouring out, I think I was draining. So you caught me and we have the video footage, but um, also I did add salt and pepper to this. People ask me about seasonings and I just always figure, you know, use salt and pepper to taste or to what your family would like. I dumped in probably about, eyeballing school, right? Uh, about two teaspoons of pepper and salt. And if it needs more, we can add more. Okay, I think we're good. You know, I always wonder for a mom with cream cheese. I'm like, come on cream cheese, come on. I know you can melt down, I know you can do it. We did it here. And this is my lodge. 17 inch cast iron pan that has just been wonderful. He's done all kinds of things in it. 30 quart mixing bowls. Now I did prep these egg noodles yesterday. So I was thinking that, oh, I have to yet again eyeball uh, the four 12 ounce packages of noodles because this is, I think we did 12, 10 or 12 packs for several recipes. Um, so anyway, that's okay. I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm going to just dump the meatballs in here, eyeball out these noodles, and then I'll have Zion come and pour the cream sauce on top for us. Then I can do the mixing and we can go from there. And my recipe in Big Batch Freezer Cooking Guide 15 talks about using two 48 ounce packages of the frozen cooked meatballs. This is a bag from Costco and it is 96 ounces, so we're, we're good. We're pretty good there. So I'm just gonna dump these on in. Okay, I'm going to just get a bowl here. Get my eyeball going on these noodles. Alrighty, so here are our egg noodles and our meatballs at least stirred up and now we're gonna pour the cream sauce on.
So here we go. This is our creamy Swedish meatball casserole, and we will fill up our pans now. I was, you know, again, eyeballing it with the noodles. Did I did too, do too many? Not quite enough. I think the sauce has covered evenly. So now this is where we'll test it and see how many pans will we fill. And so it looks like we are going to be able to get five freezer meal pans of this wonderful Swedish meatball casserole. And that is great because I like stretching it even farther. Alrighty, so we ended up with five pans. So, <laughs> yay for eyeball in school and get an extra pan out of it. And this one gonna play the little noodle hopping around game. And then lots of folks will ask me if one of these pans would be enough to feed my family of 11. Looking at these, I would do two of these pans. These are, I think they were actually a little smaller than nine by 13. I think they were like nine by 11. The video footage will tell us, but a viewer had sent me these a while ago. And so I'm glad I'm getting to use them, but they're a little deeper. So I think it all shakes out at the end. If I was looking at my freezer and I knew I needed to pull out dinner for tomorrow night, I would put two of these from my freezer into my refrigerator to defrost until time to cook the next day. I would also do something along the lines of like green beans with some seasoning and some butter and some stock and such in the slow cooker because I feel like green beans go with everything. And I've been on a big green bean kick. So anyway, green beans and a Swedish meatball casserole would go together perfectly. Of course, you can also do store-bought rolls or homemade rolls or anything else you would like to serve with it. But for this, looking at this, I would do two pans. Also, these days, I have many more adults and many more teens and many more big kids who want to be teens <laughs> that I'm feeding out of my 11. I don't have four of my herd of children ages five and under and such. I mean, lots of Swedish meatball casserole could go down around here. Alrighty, so here are all five pans all wrapped up and now we're gonna go get those in the freezer. I will take you downstairs and show you how the freezer is developing as we continue to work through these meals, yay. And happiness is crossing something else off the whiteboard, yay. Alrighty, so I'm doing the cheesy beef and rice casserole now. I pre-cooked my ground beef, but I did not pre-cook it with onions, so I just went ahead and sauteed up two cups of onions and we are gonna go from there. I also have the macaroni coming up for the taco macaroni casserole. Okay, I got the onions out. We're gonna melt this butter in here now. So it's paprika, dry mustard, garlic powder, two teaspoons of the dry mustard. And then it's gonna be a total of eight cups of milk. Okay, and while that sauce is pulling itself together, I'm gonna go ahead and put my ground beef in here, whoop, and my onions, and it was a total of four pounds of ground beef. 
So again, I on this day I'm eyeballing it, but I've seen I've seen many pounds of ground beef in my lifetime, right? Also going to get out my 12 cups of already cooked rice. Get that in. I'm just trying to do any of the little steps I can do here while I have a moment. Uh, the sauce that we're working on on the stove, it just needs to cook uh, like a medium heat for two to three minutes. And I did just run over and stir it. And I did not <laughs> fly my camera over it. See, I'm, I'm calling this another cup of rice. Okay. So about 12, two. Three, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. I'm gonna call that two, so we got three. Four. Five. Don't worry, we'll mix it all together well. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Cheese and this recipe calls for eight cups of cheese, so half of that cheese will go in now to make this cheese sauce. And so this large family freezer meal guide 15 is all casserole dinners. And this one features a lot of different cream sauces. The nice thing is whenever you cook up this pack or any of my freezer cooking guides, you can put those meals in your freezer, have them for your meals for four weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks to come. You don't have to have them seven nights in a row, but you could have two a week, three a week. I mean, just whenever you need a freezer meal, these are ready to go. And what I like to do is have a variety of different styles of freezer meals in my freezer. So I can have some slow cooker freezer meal bags that I can set out to defrost and then dump those on cooking day just right into my slow cooker hey dinner's done yay also I like having a variety of casseroles now with these casserole pans for my family of 11 and I've got adults high schoolers I joke with my husband I'm like it smells like teen spirit around here haha ha. <laughs> old school nirvana right uh, but anyway we got a lot of fun carrying on here we got friends over we got family over we got a slew of upper elementary middle elementary all the way down to a one-year-old we got grandmother we've got outside family members 
we, we've got a lot going on. So yes, definitely these days I will take two pans. And what I like to do, well, I guess I do it either way, right? Like I can take two of these pans of this dinner that I'm showing you here. And then yes, I will also have some side items or I will grab two different pans. I just like to do it like buffet style. And we can have out rolls, we can have out other side items. I mean, if dinner's done, then that makes it pretty easy to chop a salad or do some other quick side dishes with it. Now, there are times where I will also do freezer meal side dishes. You know, we've had years where we've done tons of twice-baked potatoes in the freezer ready to go, and how nice those are to get out and serve with another dinner as well. But anyway, with freezer meals in general, there's really no hard rules here, friends. You do it however it works best for your family. If you don't like to use the great value shredded cheese, you can use shredded cheese from Trader Joe's. I've, I've said a lot about sour cream lately. I feel like it's my sour cream TED talk, but if you don't want to use great value sour cream, get Nancy's probiotic sour cream or make your own homemade sour cream. Uh, you can use white rice in a lot of these freezer meals. You can also use brown rice. If you have jasmine rice, that should work just fine in a lot of these freezer meals meals that also call for rice. Okay, I just had a mama sit down, eat in my chair, quick dinner break. And now we are gonna do the um, smoked sausage and broccoli casserole. I'm gonna saute up these onions now. It's our favorite thing to do this evening. And um, go from there. So for this recipe, we need 12 cups of cooked rice. It says white rice. Really, you can, you can use brown rice or jasmine rice or any rice you have available. Four of the 12 ounce packages of smoked sausage, four cups of the frozen broccoli. Uh, we're gonna put in our onions. That's going on the stove top now. Some garlic powder, salt and pepper, a cup and a third of milk, and then eight cups of shredded cheese. And there's our meat all chopped up and ready to go. And then, sorry, I got my really loud fan going, but I forgot to mark this off and to show them to you, but I'll, I'll show you the freezer downstairs. Um, marking this off, and so now we're doing the smoked sausage and broccoli casserole. So I'm gonna bring the, um, the onions over now. But just, again, showing you, marking something else off the list, yay. Oh, and this was something I had my happy helpers here help me with. So, so, so much getting marked off the list. The nice thing is with this recipe, and I mean just so many of these recipes, we're just gonna dump all the ingredients here in the 30 quart mixing bowl and pull it all together. So we got our rice, got our onions. Yay, meat going in there. Also, I'm adding in our broccoli. Also, I'm going to do half the cheese.
All right, here we go. And I top them each with a cup, a handful of cheese for the smoked sausage and broccoli and rice casserole. The kids are home, so you'll probably hear happy kid noises in the background. Yay. All righty, so now here are the four pans of the smoked sausage and broccoli casserole all roped. All roped. All roped up, roped up, wrapped up, ready for the freezer. And then, because it's so satisfying, we are marking that off. Hello, kids. Okay, next up, we are doing our big batch taco macaroni casserole. This will also make four 9x13s, unless I go a little off the rails with too much eyeball in school, and uh, we end up getting five pans out of it. But here we go. And this is just my same pan that I just sauteed the onions in a few minutes ago. Uh, then the ground beef is already cooked, but I do need to cook four pounds with the taco seasoning and let it simmer just a little bit for that seasoning. So watch me now, walk and catch a towel. <laughs> the mystery of my favorite spoon. Where, where is my favorite spoon? It's okay. Let's see, is it in this pot? Hmm, oh. It'll turn up. It'll turn up when we're done, right? And once I'm done mixing, oh, well, now Friendly. Hey, Friendly. Friendly, you're not gonna believe. Oh, here it is. It was turned on its side up against this wood. Found it, we were safe. Friendly, I just spilled like three tablespoons of ground beef on this floor. He doesn't know yet. He's about to find out. So this taco macaroni Casserole is like all the favorite things, right? Like tacos and macaroni had a baby. Now it's taco macaroni casserole. Can't be beat. Okay, I should stop. I will stop. Friendly, go look. Go look, come here. Come on. Come on. Maybe if he sees me drop another piece. Look. Come on. Now, and he's up. There you go. Come on, it's, it's allowed, it's okay. He's like, you're standing there cooking. It's okay, there you go. <laughs> we can work together in this arrangement. So we don't have to. I already did the macaroni noodles earlier. They only did those for me. But I birthed her and I told her to do the macaroni noodles. So that was my part. That was my share of the deal. I guess I could get my meat masher out. I love my meat masher. I just haven't gotten it out yet today. So I don't know. Yes, I should. Break it on in. Say welcome to the party meat masher. So we are over halfway done, which is good. I have been taking breaks and resting. Like I say, I've had two teenagers helping me off and on this evening, and my husband has had the kids out. They are back now. They're not in here though. And he also fed them dinner out. So. Otherwise I would have cooked one of those, or two of those pans of the Swedish meatball casserole. And now I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, we know this, over a decade on these internet streets. So I know that there'll be lots of questions in the comments, especially if you're new over here. Folks always like to ask me, want to know, and it's a good question on just how do we use these 40 freezer meals when I, oh no, my towel, get up here. It's still good, it's still good. One second, we picked it up. And so we will not eat all 40 of these meals straight in a row, like over what? What is that, five or six weeks or so? I mean, unless there's a need, right? 
whenever I've been postpartum with a baby, you can go back and watch my years and years of postpartum freezer meal videos through, let's see, at least the last two babies that I've had, baby number eight and baby number nine, I had a lot of freezer cooking videos. Now, the weeks leading up to the baby and, you know, six to eight weeks, excuse me while I scratch my forehead, <laughs> um, after the baby, we might be doing nothing but freezer meals. But these meals, as example, well, they are 40 meals. But now for my family, there are gonna be nights where we will do two pans plus side dishes. Like I said, the Swedish meatball casserole, that and some green beans and some rolls, maybe even some applesauce on the side. I mean, then, you know, uh, then hey, yeah, that's dinner, but that would be two pans. Um, also, I do feed 11 all day, every day, but it does happen several times a week that we're feeding 13, 14, or 15. I like to do these family style buffets also. And so I wouldn't mind, again, doing two pans of a Swedish meatball casserole. And then I might also get out a pan of this taco macaroni. And everyone can fix their plates with various side item choices. I mean, with that, you know, we might have a fresh salad out, maybe some corn on the cob. And people can just make their plates with whatever they want based on the food spread that mama has put before them. So I'm really flexible with all of that. So now with these freezer meals, see in our family we have Civil Air Patrol one night a week, we have horseback riding lessons, we have church, uh, we have homeschool group, other activities, and of course I'm a working mama we have different dynamics with that. So whenever I have a bunch of freezer meals, it's usually safe to say that three to four nights a week, it'll be freezer meals for dinner. If we have freezer meals for three to four nights, then I might have a night where I have the time and I wanna, or I'm filming, or I'm, I'm doing something, right? Or there's just a recipe I wanna do. And so let's say it's a big stock pot of baked potato soup, then I will make that and we will have that for several meals. So that would not be a freezer meal. Uh, or we have some meat, we just got our whole cow in and a whole hog in. And so let's just say I've set out some pieces of beef, they're defrosted, and Travis is gonna grill one night. Now even whenever he grills though, we try to have enough for at least lunch the following day. So we always look for ways to big batch cook and get ahead on dinners and lunches. We are gonna be doing a lot of freezer meal breakfast in videos coming up, and we're gonna do so many, so many, so many <laughs> make-ahead freezer meals and make-ahead meals for Christmas as well. So it's a coming, it's a coming. Okay, so I think this ground beef looks good. And obviously there's, there's nothing to drain here with that. So just as an example, if you were gonna cook up this large family freezer meal pack 15, the 40 meals could just totally stretch out in your life however you need them. If you need six weeks of dinners and you don't wanna think about nothing, done. Or if you want sanity saving freezer meals in your freezer ready to go for the next 12 to 16 weeks, Cook it one time, be done. Know that when the crazy busy happens, because the crazy busy happens, that's one thing for sure. You have dinner all ready for those crazy busy nights. All right, so we just did our taco seasoning. So now in a very large bowl, combine the ground beef, the noodles, the black beans, corn, salsa, sour cream, and four cups of the cheese. Let's get that all in our 30 quart mixing bowl. Okay, don't be scared, it's all okay. I got Zion doing something else, so I thought I could carry this bowl over here and put the ground beef in it, just kind of scoop it along. Instead of hauling the cast iron pan, so let's see if how these things work out here. Some folks ask me about wearing gloves, but I'm just a mama cooking for my family, so I don't know too many mamas that wear gloves when they cook their food at home. Some might, that's cool. I don't, but if I was cooking for other people or if these were meals that I was giving to other families, uh, then I definitely would. But these, I feel like we're in a season where we need these and we will be using these for sure. And so my hands are pure and holy, ha ha. <laughs>
And I do have beans that I have canned, that I've been working on canning, but I also have great value beans and various beans in my grocery store in my basement that I'm also working on using. You can rinse your beans also if you'd like. And I get a lot of questions about freezing sour cream. If it's mixed up in a casserole like this, it's gonna be just fine. You can even freeze whole containers of sour cream, like, like these big ones, and still use them in baking and cooking and such. They're not gonna be like the consistency of sour cream on your baked potato. I always tell folks that, but you can still use it. It's still very, very usable. And, Again, you can do homemade sour cream, or you can also do like the Nancy's probiotic sour cream. It doesn't have to be. You can switch out any of your ingredients. even with my big spoon here. Thank you to my viewing friend who sent this spoon to me. I've been using it for years. Years and years and years. And several of you have asked me about if I have a P.O. box or had sent me things and they got returned. I just got into a jam up when I was postpartum with Tobin. I, I had a P.O. box that was at the Weems Avenue, I think, address for several years. Many of you sent me things there. But anyway, my renewal came up. It was when I was postpartum with Tobin. It was an hour away from where we live now. It was totally on my to-do list to call and pay it. So anyway, I got canceled for non-payment, even though I had had that box for years. They were pretty sick of me <laughs> because I got so much mail. Um, so anyway, I think they were glad to see me go. And it was hard for us because once we moved, it was so far. So anyway, I got booted. I do have a new P.O. box address for those of you who are looking for it. And uh, that's on my about page. So I'm sorry, I know so many of you had sent me things and you were giving me messages that had got returned and just got really overwhelming and complicated for me. And you know, postpartum mom life, it's just some, something's gotta go. So after I realized that they had canceled it on me and so many folks were upset, I just, I think I waited over a year before I got another one set up, but I do have one now. So that's back up and running again. This uh, Mega Mama Island is working out well. Let's see, was that my other thing of corn? It was. I was as always, making the best of it. I thought, oh, I had one less corn than I needed. I'm just pushing things away that we don't need right now. Yes, I will. We have it. We will.
going to spread some of these out. I think we might almost have enough for a fifth pan. Definitely, I eyeballed the noodles. We had, um, it was a 64 ounce box, and then we had a little left in another box, because I could use those macaroni noodles for something else. So we were just using that up also. That might be where our eyeballing school noodle math got a little off, but that's okay. Yeah, we're gonna do a fifth pan just fine. Naomi is helping me get the tuna ready for the next recipe. And this, finally, Travis will be so proud. This is a, a little kitchen mama can opener. So she's able to have that opening while she's draining and getting the tuna in the bowl for us. And then Zion just wrapped these five taco mac and cheese for us. So he's gonna carry these down and put them in the freezer. We will walk down there at some point this evening and I'll give you a look at how things are fitting in and looking for us. And I've been sitting here mm -hmm, hydrating, drinking my water, just reading through some various lasagna recipes I have over at largefamilytable.com and memory lane. With this one lasagna freezer meal I have over on the blog, it makes enough sauce that whenever I did this particular recipe over there, I also had the sauce to go ahead and do four pans of baked ziti. So I don't, I, I am also, I am also the woman sitting on ice right now. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see how this evening continues. I do have helpers though, so that definitely helps this mama. Okay, so next up, I'm looking at our list here. It's our tuna casserole. Let's see, click the link. Everything in my big batch freezer cooking guides is linked, so I can just click the recipe link in the table of contents and go to it, yay. Okay, so our egg noodles are done. Naomi is uh, chucking away, chucking, I don't know, chucking, chugging something. She's working on the tuna for us. More onions, bell pepper. Naomi got the peppers ready earlier. It says two cups of celery. I don't think we have any. I, I will check and see here. Um, flour, black pepper, salt, milk, mayonnaise, shredded cheese, some pimentos and fried onions. Now, okay, it's like, hey, we've been here before. Put our butter in now. So all of these beautiful peppers and onions are being sauteed up in butter. And this is for the cheesy tuna noodle casserole. We are going to make a delicious cream sauce here for it. And all of these beautiful vegetables are going into it as well. Also, 
in the recipe I have to put some celery in there. I didn't have any celery, but and there I am. I'm just I'm we're just gonna shake some pepper in there too. <laughs> Take the top off the pepper shaker, shake it in. But anyway, so I added some celery seed, and that uh, was ve a very nice addition to this recipe. And again, I just I love how beautiful the colors look. I'm using up one flower and go into another. So now I am again just whisking away, making this cream cream sauce for those casseroles into something. We are pulling this together. And there I am. Yay. And also we see that in this portion of the video, the green hutch had arrived in the in between time uh, because I shopped for that green hutch or teal hutch uh, whenever I was having my days resting on ice. And it has just uh, taken up, taken up residence in the Mega Mama kitchen very nicely. And again, we're glad it's here. Okay, so it tastes great. I am going to add the equivalent, we'll say, of two teaspoons of salt here that and I didn't add any earlier. So everything has cooked down and made us a very lovely cream sauce for our cheesy tuna noodle casseroles. So now we're gonna get our egg noodles in a big 30 quart mixing bowl, those 14 cans of tuna, and then this cream sauce. We will mix it all up, see if we'll get four or five pans and then top those with some cheese and add those to our collection also. It's very hot, so doing the one finger, yeah, that's what it did. One finger quick taste test is risky, but we did it. I think the celery seed was a nice addition too. Okay, now on to the next step. All right, here goes the tuna. The cheese sauce. Look at me doing my one little bit of effort. You okay? Okay. I'm just proud of it. It's a nice looking sauce. Just getting in what I can real quick and our tuna. We're gonna eyeball the uh, four 12 ounce bags of cooked egg noodles. Now the cheesy tuna noodle casseroles are going to go down in the freezer. Alrighty, so next up is the large family chicken and Swiss casserole. Now I don't have any Swiss, so as always, doctoring it up and using what I have on hand, but we'll make it work.
Okay, so we have these two 30 quart bowls, both with the remaining pre-cooked egg noodles. And uh, this one we'll just say will be for the beefy corn uh, casserole. And this one will be for the chicken and kind of not Swiss now <laughs> casserole that we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and dump in the mixed vegetables for the chicken casserole. Uh, and then we will also be adding in 20 cups of shredded chicken. Okay, mixed up all I can while, I, while our sauce thickens. Alrighty, so here are, we got five out of it, the chicken and Swiss casserole, although there is chicken in these, but there is no Swiss. I won't tell if you won't. I've been joking, all we have is our dumb old donkey great value Fiesta blend cheese. That's cool. It's gonna all work out in the end. Gonna wrap these up now and get these in the freezer. Okay, so this is the beginnings also of our hearty beef and corn noodle casserole. I do have some different components that are going to go in it ready. These are the tomatoes. I actually opened these the other night, so I'm going to go ahead and get those in there. It was two 28-ounce cans. And the recipe calls for four 14-and-a-half-ounce cans of corn. We opened, whoopsie, four 29-ounce cans of corn so we have we'll have super mega corn in these casseroles but it's open I won't tell if you don't there's the sauteed onions going in okay so the ground beef is already cooked Alright, so here's what I'm working with here. Now I'm going to get my stirring on. So here we go, we got five of the beef and corn casseroles and then we still have our chicken and not really Swiss haha -ha casseroles that we're gonna go through now and wrap all of these. Let's 
still, that's 10 more. Large family, massive freezer meals, all the good stuff uh, for the freezer to add to our collection. Also, the, the master plan behind the chicken and Swiss or chicken and not Swiss, depending on what kind of cheese you have available at home, right? Uh, you also, on cooking day, after it defrosts and before you put it in the oven, you mix up some cornbread stuffing mix and you sprinkle that on the top and then you bake it. But I include that step in my freezer cooking guide. Okay, so some list crossing out satisfaction here. We finished the choos cho choosy, the choosy tuna noodle casserole. We finished the chicken and not Swiss casserole, and we just finished the beef and corn noodle casserole. Okay, this lasagna, this is gonna be our problem child. So you see here, time-wise, wait, do you see it? It's 11.28. PM. I've taken a lot of breaks. I have sat on several ice packs. I have had two wonderful helpers. We have made it through, but I am not going to stay up till 2 a.m. for no lasagna tonight. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do for you is let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a massive mega mama lasagna extravaganza video where we could do two or three different types of lasagna and maybe some big ziti as well. Like I can of course plan it massive in my head. So we have done 32 freezer meals this evening. I, I think that's pretty close because of course my freezer cooking guide 15 guides us through making 40. I already made eight of these. And then this evening I was gonna do 32 minus the four from the lasagna, but I've had four or five of these recipes tonight I've gotten five pans out of. So not doing a complete accounting math problem here. I think we're pretty six one way half dozen another with the amount we did. So we have made it 240 or a little past. Definitely did 32 tonight. So we are gonna get these wrapped up and I'm going to show you what the freezer looks like next. Well, happy new day friends. Let me show you how those 40 freezer meals turned out and exactly where I put them all. So here we go. Open the door. Now there's also popsicles in here. We'll look at those. But here are all of the freezer meals. So exciting. And I do still have uh, maybe six now slow cooker freezer meals uh, from a bit ago. But we are also rotating those through, but here are our 40 casserole freezer meals. And you see, like, <laughs> this is late night putting stuff on the side. We also have uh, two bags, I believe, of pre-cooked shredded chicken that was left from all of that. But there we go, dinner's done. However, this mama needs dinner done. Dinner is done. Will this be I don't know, six weeks, will this be over 20 weeks? Wait and see, life is gonna tell us. <laughs> life is gonna tell me when I need freezer meals, okay? And I've got them ready to go. So we did it, friends. We are victorious. 40 freezer meals made over six weeks. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, my good intentions. We were going to have this all done in one day or two days. And there you go. I got my check marks for life and stuff. Yay. Be sure to click that first link in the description below and get my super mega extravaganza freezer cooking and easy meal bundle for over 80% off. We have gotten some phenomenal reviews from many of the people who have purchased and it's 80% off now for just a few more days. So click that first link in the description below, save big, fill your freezer with easy meals for your family, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, desserts, holiday meals, make-ahead meals, sheet pan dinners, freezer meals, all the things are waiting for you in my super mega extravaganza bundle. And I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye. Yay. Mm -hmm.